Namaste everyone. So we'll start discussing about exercises one and two today. That's for the first time also. And we are going to introduce exercise one and two in the tenth batch also. Now, if you look at the UHV three course, then there are twenty-eight lectures and fourteen practice sessions. And those fourteen practice sessions are essentially the seven steps of exercise one <coughs> and seven steps of exercise two. So, like we, that is, each one of us are doing these exercises for developing ourselves. So, as we are discussing yesterday, if you look at the core outcome of this whole exercise, it is development of the self. Rest, everything follows, isn't it? So, the whole purpose of this whole exercise, and if you look at the takeaway of this life. is that i am able to develop myself as a conscious entity and that development means i am able to awaken <coughs> the activities on block b1 that is i am able to awaken the activities of contemplation understanding and realization the more i am awakened in block b1 the more harmony i am in and my participation is also more and more in terms of order more in terms of universal human order human tradition so we are in the process of developing understanding and also in this process we are able to purify our accumulated feelings and thoughts <clears throat> so we all have accumulation of feelings and thoughts we all have our old sanskars isn't it and when we share we share how we are making mistakes in our living so many times we share our mistakes in behavior where we are not able to ensure mutual happiness in our behavior we are not able to ensure mutual prosperity in our work when we are not able to fulfill human goal while participating the larger order this is the expression part now behind this expression is my imagination isn't it so something is driving my imagination and what is that which is driving so desire is driving my imagination now my desire may have accumulation of multiple conditionings which form my old sanskars some of them may be guided by my natural acceptance some of them may not be guided by my natural acceptance so many times i start struggling also with my sanskars does it happen so when i am not able to see the continuity of happiness in me i try to trace the natural acceptance in me many times i am not able to trace the natural acceptance in me i can also see some sanskars which are overpowering my imagination i am not able to get away with that so i start struggling with the sanskars but i am not able to purify my sanskars so what is the way to go ahead so we'll see that the more i am able to awaken my higher level activities or the effort that i am doing for awakening of the higher level activities by referring to my natural acceptance the old sanskars get purified if they were in consonance with my natural acceptance they get enriched because they further get awakened if not then they get replaced you know by the right sanskars and that is purification so for living with continuous fulfillment continuous happiness we are doing these exercises in the first course on uhv we investigated into the basic human desire basic human aspiration and we identified it as continuity of happiness we had concluded that in order to ensure continuous happiness we need to develop three things right understanding in the self right feeling right thought in the self and competence or right living with the world outside have we been able to conclude this isn't it so these are three primary responsibilities for each one of us isn't it and the actual meaning of punctuality is that within a lifetime i am able to accomplish this <laughs> then i am punctual in true sense of the word that yes in one lifetime i could accomplish this isn't it so i have to ensure right understanding in the self geeta didi is happy now <laughs> right feeling and right thought in the self so sometimes we try to see whether my living is right with the world outside if not then i try to look for my feeling and thought and i try to set it right 
but unless i have the right understanding in the self this do not get in you know order so i am we all of us are working for this so we are doing these exercises in order to develop right understanding of the existential reality so i want to understand whatever exists now if you look at the reality we can see that there are so many units a variety isn't it how can i understood this whole thing being a single human being you know being in my own place so what is to be understood so this is something that we'll explore in module 2 what is to be understood isn't it but briefly you can see that if you look at the reality space is there nature is there in the nature there are two kinds of units conscious unit and material units so i have to understand the whole thing i have to understand the self body family society nature and the entire existence and this understanding in the self is there by the self understanding of existence in the self by the self is that fine then based on this i have the right feeling and right thought of relationship harmony and coexistence in the self <clears throat> so every time i have the feeling of relationship feeling of harmony feeling of coexistence and the same thing drives my thought also so all the time i am always analyzing in terms of relationship harmony and coexistence and that when it comes to expression in living so there is competence or right living in the self living in relationship harmony and coexistence with the world outside in terms of behavior with human being which leads to mutual happiness work with the rest of nature leading to mutual prosperity and participation in the entire nature leading to fulfillment of human goal now if you look at the human goal there are four goals that we have been discussing and you know, happiness in every individual prosperity in every family fearlessness that is trust in the society and mutual fulfillment that is coexistence in the nature now if you look at the living part here skills will also you know play an important role so the essence is here right understanding right feeling right thought but when it comes to right living then we have to learn skills for example if i have to talk to you and we are conducting a workshop in south then i have to learn the language which both of us can understand isn't it that becomes a skill but what is to be conveyed is the essence in the same language we can convey something wrong also something right also so when it comes to living i have to learn the skills also but the essence is there at the level of understanding feeling and thought similarly when we have to work if i have to make a ppt if i have to produce this presenter then i have to learn the skills but why i am doing all this has to be clear so we'll work on the self first once we are able to set the self right we'll be able to live in harmony within and also be ready to live in harmony with the world outside our major focus there for will be on ensuring right understanding of the existential reality self body family society nature and the entire existence in the self right feeling right thought of relationship harmony and coexistence in the self so we'll discuss all these words so many words put together now so we will start from the self isn't it because it is me who is the seer doer and enjoyer why am i doing all this because i am not enjoying happiness all the time isn't it so to ensure happiness in me in continuity i have to understand the entire existence if you look at the rest of the existence other than human beings things are in order isn't it but i have to understand them so that i can be in a state of happiness in continuity within me so i have to work on myself so i have to work for a right understanding right feeling and right thought to live with fulfillment we need to understand we need to see that is to observe and to see we need to pay attention to be mindful so to understand i have to see and and seeing has a particular meaning that's why another word observe has been used here i have to observe i have to be mindful i have to be attentive so i have to pay attention now where i am paying attention so there is one thing called seer which is me and the sight something which i am seeing now what i am seeing where is my attention if i am paying attention to relationship i can understand relationship if i am paying attention to harmony i can understand harmony if i am paying attention to coexistence i can understand coexistence but if i am not paying attention to this then how will i understand so most of the time we'll see that our attention is focused on events isn't it and we are caught up in the expression part 
the form and properties of the units what is happening you know, in the world outside many times we are spending time you know, getting information about events outside and we miss out the essence part so essentially i just have to pay attention now if i have to understand myself i have to pay attention to me so i am the seer i am the sight what is the problem it's only that i have not been able to set the priority for me rightly if i am able to set the priority for me rightly i can see myself what is occupying my imagination i have to make out and then i have to look into my sanskars which gradually get purified so in these exercises we are paying attention to see to understand and ultimately to live with fulfillment we tend to make mistakes in living with a reality that we do not understand now the issue is that we have to live every moment from the time we took birth we have to live to live i have to interact i have to interact with human beings i have to interact with the rest of nature so i have to do something i have to take decisions whether i understand or not so what happens since i have to live i have to take decisions from time to time and understanding is not ensured so what do i do i borrow information from outside analyze and condition myself in a particular way isn't it life is like this people are like this society is like this things are like this you know so we keep on conditioning ourselves so in some sense this is good that it is helping me live but that becomes a hindrance after some time because that becomes an accumulation of conditionings in me which keep on overpowering my imagination i am not able to see the essence behind that isn't it so we tend to make mistakes in living with a reality that i do not understand if i do not understand myself i am not able to understand my goal also if i am not able to understand my body i assume this body to be a source of happiness if i do not understand the others in my family i over evaluate under evaluate other evaluate otherwise evaluate them in terms of you know our interaction so those kinds of mistakes keep on taking place so there are two important aspects while paying attention one is the object of attention and the second is process of paying attention so object of attention is where i am paying attention now just try to see within a day how many times i pay attention to relationship how many times i pay attention to harmony you know mostly our attention might be caught up in the expression part what we are doing to fulfill relationship or otherwise to fulfill harmony or otherwise so we have to be aware of the object of attention and then there has to be some process of paying attention how do i pay attention so we are sitting here we are listening to something as a proposal we are trying to pay attention what will be the process that will you know ensure that i pay attention to the reality so there are two important aspects object of attention is whatever is to be understood to be lived with and the process of paying attention is to be aware to evaluate without reaction so we'll see as we go along in exercises how do i pay attention isn't it so we have to understand all that we live with the self the body the family society nature and ultimately the entire existence so ultimately we have to understand the entire existence in the first first course on uhv <coughs> we have seen that existence is coexistence that is units are there as material and consciousness and they are submerged in space so we'll try to understand these three things now if you look at the object of attention there are three things to be understood the conscious entity the material entity and space that's all we can count on fingers <laughs> isn't it so if you look at the number of units there are you know infinite number of units but if you look at the type of units there are only two types of units material and consciousness and they are there in space the good thing is that i am conscious entity my body is material entity i am in space body is in space so everything is here so to understand the whole nature the whole cosmos you know i start paying attention to me my body and my being in space and that becomes the initiation of the right understanding so we'll try to understand the self that is the consciousness the body that is material and coexistence you know that is submergence of nature in space so by way of doing these exercises exercise 
is to understand the consciousness in detail. Exercise 2 is to understand the material that is body in detail, for example, body in detail. And briefly touch upon exercise 3, which is for understanding the coexistence of the space. So, what is the goal? To ensure right understanding. What is right understanding? To understand consciousness, material, and the submergence of consciousness and material in space. That is all. So, exercise 1 is essentially meant for observing the consciousness. So, observing the consciousness by the consciousness. Exercise 2 is meant for observing the material. And one example of material is the body. So, the more I am able to pay attention to my body, I am able to see the interaction between me and the body, I am able to understand the material also. Through my eyes, I am only seeing the form. At the level of thought, I am analyzing the property. But what material unit means is not clear to me. We have read in science that there is something called atom. We have never seen the atom with our eyes also. We have just seen some, some effect of one instrument on another instrument and we call it as a property and from that we make out the form of the atom and we assume that we have understood the material. But you can see that the way we term understanding today you know, and we do not understand actually so many mistakes we are doing in the life today, so many destructive weapons we are making because we have not been able to understand the material. Why? Because we have not been able to understand the consciousness. Isn't it? So, you have to start from the consciousness. So, exercise 1 is essentially to understand the consciousness by the consciousness. Exercise 2 is to understand the material by the consciousness. And exercise 3 is to understand the coexistence the space by the consciousness. So, these three realities are to be known. Now, if you look at the whole existence, it is units submerged in space. Space is all pervading. Material and consciousness are two kinds of units. So, Body is a material entity, I am the conscious entity and space is there, within me, outside me, isn't it? So, the reality is very much there, available to me, every moment. Such a nice thing to say, you know, that the reality is always available to me, every moment. And I spent the whole life without paying attention to reality, which was available to me every moment. Isn't it? And that's how... We start looking for happiness outside in some external influences in place of ensuring happiness within. So, the sequence to see would be, we will start from consciousness, then material and then finally, we, when we are prepared to some extent, we can go to see the submergence also. Now, when we say to see, so self is there and eyes are there. Now, who is the seer, eyes or self? Self. Eyes are merely an instrument, isn't it? For example, this pointer is there. I place the pointer in this way, you are able to see the form in this way. I reverse it and then you are seeing the back side of it. I you know, rotate it and you are seeing this part of it. I hide in my hands and then ask what is this? You still say that this is a pointer inside. Now, how do I see every time? Because if you look at the eyes, the form is different on different occasions every time. But I am able to see. You know? So, seeing the self by the self, the consciousness observing the consciousness, seeing the body by the self, the consciousness observing the material, where I am the seer, I am seeing not the eyes, eyes are merely an instrument. And then comes seeing the coexistence by the self, you know? the consciousness observing the coexistence. So, we can start by observing the distance between self and body, and then gradually relationship between self and body. But for that, I have to prepare myself a bit more. You know, so, we will go along by starting size 1 and 2. So, presently it could be the case that our attention is outside. So, my attention is outward, outside or in relationship, assumption about relationship and then I am recognizing and fulfilling based on my you know, present perspective. And then I am applying the power of the self outward. Most of the time our attention is outside. What is happening in the world outside? Isn't it? What is happening in others life? What is happening in others family? What is happening in the society around? So, most of the time it may be the case that our attention is outside. Now, from there we have to bring the attention inward. Basically, we are just saying that we are applying the power outside, that is all. 
yes the same thing now we have to look inward so i have powers in me i have the power of desire i have the power of thought i have the power of expectation now where i am applying the power and these powers are indestructible they are always there with me they are continuous isn't it now whether i am utilizing the power in the right direction or in the wrong direction right so first of all i have to look inward isn't it and then when this part is clear then i can look outward so i can start by looking within in the self that is by ensuring knowing so that assuming is guided by knowing and then i can go to fulfill the relationship with the outside world with knowing and assuming i am recognizing the relationship and fulfilling so this would be the right manner you know so presently i was caught up in the outward world now here we are trying to look within and then again we go and interact with outside world but the awareness is there now earlier the awareness was not there i was interacting i was not aware of my own desires i was not aware of my own conditionings see we keep on using this word right evaluation when you talk about relationship and just see if i have to rightly evaluate myself do i need to be aware of all my conditionings <laughs> am i aware of all my conditionings so am i rightly evaluating myself just see you know being aware of myself itself you know maybe such a you know big task for me isn't it so i have to look within and then i can interact with the world outside so i have to utilize my powers so that i can and i utilize them inward first and then i can go outward so attention inward and with that attention outward as and when required now this essentially means that if i am able to ensure this within me then the source of happiness can be stated in me else the source of happiness remains outside and then i can see that i am restless i am trying to fetch happiness from outside i am trying to fetch information from outside which can make me little comfortable and this become the way of life you just see that with growing accumulation with growing technologies you know with growing market is so much of restlessness people are not able to sit by themselves in the corporate world if you see people are working from monday to friday right totally busy and then they have to go outside make some you know fun do some party on friday evenings and then they have to take you know long sleep on the weekends all the time we are running helter skelter we are running here and there trying to fetch happiness from outside can the source of happiness be stated inside that is the question unless the source of happiness is inside there is no possibility of continuity so the exercise one is observing the self by the self looking within so this is just one way of looking within and not the only way the steps mentioned in this exercise are one possible set of steps and not the only set of steps so you'll see that when you go by these steps you might have felt a need of analyzing further we can break one step into multiple steps and once we are able to accomplish you can put many steps into one step that is also possible so this is just one of the possible ways so for these observations do i need to use the eyes to see the self no and i have to see myself so to see my imagination do i need to use my eyes no so give rest to the eyes keep eyes in a comfortable position either open or closed or half open whatever is comfortable it's up to you so there is no prescription as such that you have to keep them open or closed it's up to you the object of attention is the self you have to pay attention to the self do i need to take any work from the body for example to see my feeling do i need to take any work from the body so no so you can give rest to the body keep it in any comfortable position in any posture which is comfortable so it's up to you again we can sit you know erect we can you know lean on something whatever but yes ensure that you do not sleep <laughs> if you sleep then you're not able to pay attention <laughs> ji yeah uh, it usually happens when we say give rest to your eyes and if i close i usually doze off maybe for few seconds few minutes but i usually doze off i try but it never happens so yeah. i avoid closing my eyes because if i close i'm gone 
I am out. <laughs> yeah. So one issue is that when I close my eyes, है ना, I sleep. But when I open my eyes, my attention is outward. Attention? <laughs> no. What? Yeah. My attention is outward, but whatever uh, someone is speaking means uh, when we are doing, I am able to hear it when I wake up. But for few minutes, I am really gone. So that's This a little problem. Generally happens, and that is because one reason could be exertion of the body. Many times the body is exerted, and we need to give rest. So as soon as I close my eyes and start paying attention within, body is also at rest. So that may happen. This is one reason. The second could be I am little tired in my imagination, struggling within me. That is also possible. So the moment I start paying attention, I get some relief. So when I get relief, the body also gets relief. या टेक अ माइक भैया भैया इट हैज बीन अनफॉर्म टू मी कि सर्टेन टाइम्स यू फॉल अस्लीप बिकॉज द ब्लड इज नॉट रीचिंग योर ब्रेन दैट्स द रीजन यू फॉल अस्लीप सो आई मीन टू दिस कि वेदर इट इज रियली दिस और इट इज दैट इज इट अ मेडिकल कंडीशन और इज इट बिकॉज माई बॉडी इज टायर्ड सो सर्टन टाइम्स आई एम इन दिस एंड यूजली इट हैपन्स आफ्टर मील्स कि See Even the first reason that you cited has to be little investigated because when we sleep you are lying down and the body. No, even if I'm sitting and I close, I'm gone. No, no, I'm saying <laughs> so. It's not that we sleep when the blood circulation is not there in the brain because when we lie down, the blood circulation is very much there. But one thing that we can make out is that our body is sometimes exerted, hmm. and and it needs rest. But we keep on working. So if we try to sit by ourselves, sometimes we feel like dozing off. and then we get ample rest also so fine if you doze off well and good and then you can again awaken uh, and then yeah the get things. active yes and third time it has happened is ki when we do fasting that time also there uh, when we are doing work automatically it closes off everything closes off means i am in my sleep now work is going on we are within ourselves we are doing things now i'm not able to get because i'm trying to find out ki where i'm lacking so if i'm able to work on it it will be better for me so that was one thing i also now where i'm lacking so i have to observe the self as well as the body ji sir i would like to mention uh, two contradictory statement so we are uh, i mean as we are discussing about this uh, sleeping or uh, non sleeping and all um a few of the celebrity or uh, any kind of uh, famous persons mention uh, often when they are persons are feeling more stressed and they just uh, uh, gone through more pain uh, physically mentally whatever up to their uh, personal or professional so they just wants to identify the solutions for that number one and the way our the processing to get the better solution they suggested one best solution is please forget everything and go to sleep and you have to sleep that's all once you just wake up all the problem i mean you can pictureize or figure out the problem in appropriately you can uh, derive the solution this is one statement and second statement is i have more commitment to complete it uh, i mean based on some target so um, to complete the target i have just forced myself to sleep but that moment the persons usually conclude like you won't get a i mean a kind of a peaceful sleep and all so this is i just wants to link this two statement this is connecting in one single knot of what this is based on the consciousness of the body or the based on the consciousness of the mind so what is the contradiction here thing is how the persons are deciding to i mean go to sleep when they are facing more stress to reduce the stress they are taking as a strategy to sleep number 1 and linking with the other statement number 2 is they just wants to i mean they plan something to achieve it tomorrow for that they just forcing themselves to sleep first one is uh, they just uh, want to um, make a calmness on their mind as well as their body and second one is they are pre planned everything to give the order to the body both i mean both body and the mind so connecting of these two not 
which is playing a more uh, i mean uh, more powerful either a brain or a body no the issue is that in both the example that you cited there is anxiety in the self and this is not a naturally acceptable state so okay. how to come out of anxiety so one measure that is adopted is better give rest to the body you know so let the body sleep then the brain will also sleep or take rest to some extent and then i will be free of these many accumulated you know thoughts and to some extent at least so that works so if you have to uh, get somewhat relaxation from anxiety sleep does work yes. okay yeah so that is there yes thank you sir bhaiya when we But close our eyes we have to see what would be my naturally acceptable state in which state i want to continue so what is the state of harmony within No, that is something universal. That is something that we are trying to investigate. Yeah, as you said, that uh, conditions. I mean, uh, your own conditions applying the way we are just uh, bringing out our own conditions, which is feasible to bring out the possible solution. Am I right, sir? No. What we are saying that I want to be in a state of continuity of happiness. I want to be free of anxiety. Okay. So if I am able to ensure this, these issues don't arise. because a famous celebrity um, uh, actor kamal hasan just mentioned in uh, uh, many occasions wherever possible to bring out this particular thing he just said if you want to identify if you want to bring out a best solution out of any unsolvable problem don't think too much go to sleep go and sleep well and tomorrow you'll get the better best and world bestest solution for your problem so that's what he suggested that i feel what he suggested indirectly make yourself calm in a mind wise and a body wise make yourself calm when you just be quiet for a certain time or certain period of a certain period definitely the mind or brain will just give you a better solutions yeah. this, this so, is what my perception over on it yeah so that is fine when i am calm i am able to make right decisions if i am not calm within me i am not able to make the right decisions yeah thank and you and anxiety sir. is lack of calmness I want to come out of it. Thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, one more thing, boya. Um, so when I close my eyes, uh, so the concentration is slowly more because when I open my eyes, like I am forced to look here. Somebody enters the room. Uh, there is some movement. So if I close the eyes uh, during a session, so not all the time, but uh, frequently, uh, often, uh, when I close the eyes, the the content goes into it without any distraction. Up but that you. doesn't uh, yeah. mislead that i am sleeping uh, it yeah, may look so. that i am sleeping but sometimes i feel this is uh, comfortable uh, fine up to you so it is me who has to decide you know what state i want to be my eyes in whether open or closed or half open that is up to me so the object of attention is the reality i have to pay attention to the reality so this is subjective this is something that may vary from person to person now if you look at the way people are sitting here just one pick you take and see everybody sitting in some other position you just see you know so we have decided our posture of the body by our own comfort isn't it so this is not universal but each one of us wants to be at rest isn't it each one of us wants to be calm within that is something universal so here again it is subjective it will vary from person to person but essentially the object of attention is something which is universal so now these are seven steps in exercise 1 so we'll start doing these steps one by one this is just a summary of all the seven steps how do i ensure this isn't it so in exercise 1 we are observing the self by the self and we start by observing the imagination isn't it so the simple way to observe myself is to observe the imagination so be aware observe your imagination at this moment that is the desire that is the feeling thought expectation so i can start by observing my imagination isn't it now there could be multiple issues when you go to observe the imagination maybe you appear you, uh, you may feel that there is nothing inside nothing is happening in my imagination everything is dark nothing is happening you know or one may feel like a headache while you are trying to observe your imagination or you may try to force yourself to see something while looking at your imagination all those things might be there so just be at ease with yourself and try to see whatever is coming to you when you observe the imagination 
in the imagination there are desires thoughts expectations so we can start from anywhere maybe presently my level of competence is such that i can observe my expectation whatever i am testing within from there i can see what is going on in my thought but essentially i have to observe my feeling because my feelings drive my thoughts and the thoughts drive my expectation isn't it to have to observe my feeling this may take some time what we have found experientially is that people are able to observe the thought even if you are not able to observe the thought you can start by observing the object of imagination so maybe you start observing and this is something which is a doable exercise you can try doing this in your room also so just try to find out what i am thinking about so maybe i am thinking about my home from there i start thinking about my spouse from there i start thinking about my baby from there i start thinking about my neighborhood from neighborhood i start thinking about a particular family member of the neighborhood from there my attention goes back to the spouse from here my attention goes to the you know workplace and so on so you'll see that a ray diagram gets made so if you are able to observe the feeling directly well and good if not you can ob- start by observing the object of imagination you try to make this you know you become aware what am i doing so ask yourself what am i doing not with the body what i am doing within me where i am paying paying attention if you do this for let's say a week or 15 days you will start getting aware of imagination all the time so try this you know try this in your room today evening and even during the break or you know being here you can try this so try to observe the object of imagination from there you can see the thought associated so with every object of imagination there is some thought associated and with the thought is the feeling associated so this is step 1 when you observe the imagination then when you are able to observe the feeling find out so here when you are doing step 1 you do not have to evaluate you do not have to force anything you do not have to react you do not have to try to change you do not have to try to impose just be as you are and observe this may be this is a very simple thing but may be very difficult also at times because we are not somewhat conditioned to be natural with ourselves we always try to force ourselves to do something isn't it so try to observe your feeling now here we are not evaluating in step 2 we are evaluating try to ask yourself is the feeling that you have at this moment naturally acceptable to you so the feeling that i have ji take a mic feelings drive the thoughts or thoughts drive the feeling presently it can be either way both way possible na? possible yes so for example you are sitting here and somebody comes with an apple iphone so what happened first you got the sight of the iphone so expectation happened first that is the testing of the sight took place first and then you analyzed hai na how much it have been cost costing right and then you get some desire let me also have i can afford this and i do not my old mobile is 3 years old now right and this is a new brand mobile looks good also let me have it so what is happening here the testing is driving your analyzing thought and that is driving your feeling or your desire now once you have this desire now the sight is gone the person took away with his mobile now within you you are churning hai na how to have this mobile should i go for emi <laughs> should i and now use my savings take what should i do so at the level of desire now you have this particular thing set within you that i need to have this mobile if this is not there there is no use of like this life hai na <laughs> i need to have this mobile anyhow now this desire is driving your thought so earlier the sensation drove your expectation that drove your thought that drove your desire now the desire is driving your thought and expectation so it may happen like this also so is the feeling that you have at this moment naturally acceptable to you you know 
this is something that I can find for myself. Then I can see whether I am comfortable in harmony, I am happy within, with the feeling that I have at this moment. So at each step you have to ask yourself. And then you can see who decided the feeling that you have at this moment. Did you decide it yourself or someone else or situation decided this particular feeling? Who took the decision? Now with some observation maybe you are able to see that I decided. So I am responsible for my feeling. Now there are two you know, important takeaways from here. If I am able to see that I am responsible for my feeling, so I can see that I am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness. So I get rid of the blame inside me you know, about others, that the others have made me unhappy because ultimately my desire, thought and expectation is making me happy or unhappy and I am responsible for my feeling which is driving my thought. So no more blaming others about my state of being, isn't it? I can see that I am responsible for my happiness or unhappiness and that's how I have to work upon myself. If I decide here that I have to work upon myself, then I go to see on what basis did I decide the feeling that I have at this moment. What was the basis? Isn't it? For example, now I have this craving for a mobile, a smartphone, you know, a costly smartphone. Now on what basis I am deciding this feeling that I must have? I must have this. What is the basis? So did you decide it on the basis of understanding or on the basis of some assumption? Yeah. <laughs> After UHV, uh, <laughs> this much of exercise, we can of course say that this is assumption, yes. But earlier, it could be like, it is the an achievement in life, isn't it? Which feelings are naturally acceptable to you? Now I can ask myself, if uh, I am able to see that this is based on some assumption, then I have to find it from myself. Which feelings are naturally acceptable to me? Feeling of relationship or opposition, harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle. Now these are very you know, crisp words and we can utter like, yes, I want relationship, I want harmony, I want coexistence. But maybe this is only coming as a word to me, I have to look into the meaning. A person with whom my relationship is not fulfilling and this person's behavior is not also fulfilling. Do I really want relationship with this feeling? or I want to get away with it? Do I really want to have the feeling of relationship for this person? A person has wronged me in the past. Do I still want to have the feeling of relationship with this person? Or a position is okay with this person? So, so many things will start appearing within you when you are trying to look within. Maybe your old past will come to the surface and it will start disturbing you. So many things have happened in the past which have been painful for you, they may start occurring to you, isn't it? So we have a lot of accumulation of pains inside, we might have, isn't it? So when I start looking within, looking inward, those old things may start coming to the surface, isn't it? And may start, so at times people also say that earlier it was better. <laughs> this exercise has made my life worse. <laughs> I had forgotten all those things, but now I am reminded, isn't it? <laughs> so, it may be the case that things that happened 25 years ago, now start surfacing and I feel pained again, something which I have forgotten about. But I can see that I am not resolved. The preconditioning because of which I got pained earlier, that preconditioning is sustaining in me and not resolved. It can happen again. The person may change, the situation may change, but the same kind of thing may happen again and I may feel unhappy again. So whenever we try to observe, we might get uh, like fear, we might get anxiety, we might get some pains also, that is quite possible. And then we simply try to skip over or try to avoid it. So basically we have to decide what to do, what not to do. It's not that in one sitting you are going to ensure realization. You know? so, <laughs> you know, be at ease with yourself. Try to observe as much as you can. So we have to see what feeling is acceptable to me naturally. If feelings of relationship, harmony and coexistence is naturally acceptable, then there is a need to understand relationship, harmony and coexistence. This is something that I am able to conclude. 
isn't it? So this is a doable task. This is a simple task looking from one side, but maybe a very difficult task looking from the other side because you know, it's just like opening the lid of a gutter. You know? <laughs> so many things now start appearing. It's a deep gutter, right? So many pains inside. But once I'm able to see this very naturally, that relationship is acceptable to me naturally, not opposition. Harmony is acceptable, not disharmony. Position is acceptable, not struggle. Then at least I can make a program for it. So once I'm able to decide this for me, that I have to understand this, then I can ensure that the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. So the seventh step is that I ensure it. Okay. If these feelings are ensured in continuity, then we'll be in a state of harmony and happiness every moment and then we'll be in a state of continuous happiness. It is important to note that when I am able to understand relationship, harmony and coexistence in its completeness, then I will be able to decide my feeling, thought accordingly and I will always be comfortable within. I will be in a state of continuous happiness. So you can just see the depth and width of this exercise. On the face of it, very simple, seven steps. You know? If you have to utter words, yes, harmony is acceptable. <laughs> no. Relationship is acceptable, yes. What to talk about it? <laughs> but if somebody says, with that person in that situation, what was acceptable naturally? And then it may be painful, isn't it? So we may pass through all these you know, undulations in our feelings, up and down. Sometimes feeling depressed, sometimes feeling excited, sometimes feeling at ease, sometimes uncomfortable. All this will happen. But still I have to be with myself. Keep on observing. In fact, we'll find that most of the time we are trying to avoid. Yeah. So many times people, you know. You decide. So I'm not talking about avoiding a person. I'm saying that avoiding all those that is there inside you. Are you trying to avoid it or you are trying to evaluate it rightly and then you know, purify it? You have to make out. So I have not been exposed to UHV. And there is a proposal that happiness is our innate nature. Then, whether all these steps will happen within myself, without going for any such sessions, will it happen naturally in me? So when you say naturally, what does it mean essentially? So I am going to be in line with my natural acceptance. Yes. Okay. So... This way or that way, essentially I have to understand relationship. I have to understand harmony. We may be using a different set of words, different number of steps. And you can start by observing your feeling or your thought or your expectation or your state of being, whatever you start from. But ultimately you have to ensure that the feeling of harmony, relationship and coexistence is there in you. So if you look at step 7, ultimately this has to be the outcome. And then from here you have to trace back, how do I come to this state? Uh, sorry, um, my question was, I don't know anything, uh, maybe UHV or all some other things. Bhaiya. On my own, will I be able to realize myself? Yes, hmm. that's what. So when I say on my own, what does it mean? Because we know that happiness is inside me. Everything is within me. The entire existence is a reflection of myself. So everything is within me. So again, this UHV is an out, out, uh, external input to me. My question, without any external input, will it be possible for myself? So ultimately, what will you do? You will self-explore. Self mm, G. Okay. The proposal may come or proposal may not come. Mm. But ultimately, you have to refer something to your natural acceptance, your current state of being. Mm. Mm. And then you have to start investigating into natural acceptance. That is also possible. 
I do not have any proposal. Uh, any but somehow I feel inspired uh, to pay attention to my natural acceptance uh, uh, and start validating my living. But that would be some helter skelter way of, you know, that might be going ahead. Now here we can have a different program. Mm. So this is also a possibility that I do not have any proposal. Uh, I just start. I get some inkling from outside that this could be the way. Nothing from outside, boy. Yeah. No, from inside. I'm saying. Ah, uh, yeah. That this could be the way, or uh, something I have to trace within, mm. and I start referring to my natural acceptance, and then I'm able to reach the state of right understanding. That is also possible. Yeah. But when we talk about education, then there has to be some proposal. Yeah, yeah. This I got it, boy. Yeah. But there is also a possibility. Yes. Without yes. any external inputs, the trigger may come within myself, and I can go to that extent of realization. Yes, certainly quite possible. possible. G G. Thank you, boy. Mm. Relationship. So, let me say that if I'm if I'm going to have a feeling of relationship, then it means that I. i am not in a feeling of opposition so similar to that the thing which you said in the morning session it doesn't mean if you are not uh i mean if you don't have a feeling of if you are not in harmony it doesn't mean that you are in harmony say it again <laughs> by a morning today morning you you just raised this question yeah so i was saying that it's not that either i am completely in a state of disharmony or completely mm. in a state of harmony so sometimes in harmony sometimes in disharmony okay. sometimes my desires are dictated by preconditioning sometimes sensation sometimes natural acceptance so i said that there is no nothing like binary here that i am either zero or one so let me say that as of now at this moment i am not in disharmony so does it mean that i am in harmony yeah now again you have to see what this harmony means to you at this moment so maybe the situation is conducive okay the environment is favorable okay so not troubled within so sometimes we call lack of disharmony to be harmony ah can that be same for every time is my question lack of disharmony can be harmony at all the scenarios yeah but if you do not have right understanding okay. and the external factors may cause disharmony then you are dependent again on the external factors okay. so that this disharmony is absent so if i have got it rightly whenever i get harmony from outside environment then that cannot be the true thing i have to get it from myself inside to have this so i have to have understanding of harmony to be in a state of harmony in continuity okay thank you without man. understanding it is again situation dependent okay fine thank you for example the members in your family mm. they are showering so much of praise and affection on you you know you feel very comfortable very, yes yes <laughs> tomorrow when they do not you know then you feel discomfortable within okay <laughs> nice so i'll go to exercise 2 now so in exercise 2 also there are seven steps so here we are observing the material by the consciousness and the body is an example so i start by observing the body so first of all in step 1 i have to recognize the two realities that i am there and the body is there isn't it and i can see them ji acha theek hai sir theek hai nahi theek hai abhi to bas itna hi pe rakhte hain so i can la hum log ek kar sakte hain ye to ya to 5 minute isko kare object ka 5 minute isko apne dhyan ki vastu ko dekhne wala kaam kar sakte hain so we can be with yourself you can keep your eyes closed open half open up to you and try to see what is going on in your imagination try to find out the object of imagination what you are paying attention to so presently since we are sitting in this hall we are listening to this ana uh, discussion so our attention might be here most of the time but gradually see that it starts migrating from here to there but again ana uh, get hold of it try to see where you are paying attention it may also be the case that you are not able to just see and note it so you can see for some time recollect and then note it that is also possible so for the next 10 minutes you have to observe your object of imagination make a diagram like this you know and see what is all going on in your imagination so we'll spend the next 10 minutes doing this nice
nice so you can note it now you can make that ray diagram to whatever extent you could see can you see if you have made this diagram with every object of attention what was the feeling yeah feeling and then with every object what was the feeling was there no feeling or there was some feeling if some feeling what feeling no gross words like you know put together happiness or unhappiness no what was the feeling with that object even maybe you are not able to find the right word then explain it by yourself you are not trying to ob observe it open ended you are you know, not trying to just fix some words there or label it by some words you are trying to observe within and trying to trace the feeling there in what was the feeling there by yeah, i could capture the feeling of some hatred with few of the people and why that feeling of hatred because of some events i could able to capture and uh, we will not go into the why part right now what was the object of attention what was the feeling associated with that object few people few Pardon? people was the object yeah fine fine so in fact it could be that it was not hatred with everyone not with hatred. everything yes few so people. i have to see as it is with few only so with few it was hatred with few it was affection with few it was something else i could be paying attention to some physiochemical object i could be paying attention to some human being could be paying attention to some event that happened in the past you know whatever occurs to me now here you can put aside all those words and try to look within you try to see as it is your object of attention and the feeling associated with that it is not something that is going to be accomplished in 10 minutes you know take your time theek okay? hai bhaiya shall i give my share in yes bhaiya initially when you have told to me it was blank i could not capture any imagination and later i told to myself that bhaiya has given me 10 minutes so i let me aware of myself and i have to capture the imagination what is going on so then i recalled this dots what you have framed the diagram graph in the board similar type of assignment we have done in refresher one assignment so i recalled that because when we were doing in the evening home assignment we don't know what is that now only understood <laughs> <laughs> and you did the assignment also you know <laughs> yes yes no i have done but i understood so i have read that question twice thrice and discussed with our colleagues also and came to understand some dotted we i have put some dotted and joined them but i don't know the feelings and all what was there at that time so now only i recalled that so i understood the assignment what has been given Uh, and uh, on my later i have been diverted i thought that i have got a nice opportunity 10 minutes to close eyes this is the chance to sleep <laughs> <laughs> and i i have also diverted myself so similar other may also think <laughs> nice. that's all bhaiya so it will be very interesting if you start digging inside looking into your imagination and so many things will appear to you ji yes uh, the those 10 minutes uh, first i started just praying only i was just keep on praying all my observations were only with my family members my dad mom my brothers sisters my children everyone in between i had two to three times cough i had i had water in between then again i closed my eyes i was keep on thinking only all with my family i was able to recollect and i was praying keep on praying for all of them that was my observation nice see whatever you are able to observe just note it yeah so basically you are not able to observe but when you are migrating from one object of attention to another there is still some connection there you are not able to observe that connection no i keep on thinking initially started when i started thinking i am getting lots of thoughts like this thing is not coming in right and after a particular time period when i get stopped like blank in this like uh, some light like this right and see this let me 
you note it down it was empty inside fine note it down so it's not that i have to comply with this it's not that i have to map whatever i am observing with this no i have to observe it open ended and then see how it relates to this later on okay first of all i have to observe it open ended i have to just see as it is no imposition you know no reaction no evaluation just observe as it is it's not i have to change it i have to you know make it in one particular fashion no just be what you are observe your state of being and note it down do it for few days and then you are able to see much deeper and then you are able to relate the proposal to your state of being then it is not only at the level of memory where you are having the words no you are able to see the meaning behind these words and you are able to see my state of being you know related to the words that are being said here what is actually harmony what is actually relationship we'll go into it you know as time passes by yeah, but we'll 